Hello, everyone. Um, uh, it's really, really great to be back to another City Engine user meeting. Um, I'm really happy to be part of this event. Um, so once again, so thank you very much, Matt, for organizing this and team. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to this two-day event. It looks really, really awesome. So. Right, uh, so yeah, so my name is Flora. Uh, I'm uh, originally trained as an architect. I worked as an urban planner for a couple of years. And now I'm currently a researcher at the Center for Advanced Spatial Analysis in, uh, in uh, UCL. And uh, I'm currently working on, uh, well, I was working on uh, Internet of Things and uh, doing some visualizations of sensory data. And currently I'm doing, um, physical dashboards for the visualization and communication of real uh, live uh, street data streams in the city. So, but uh, I also did a PhD and my PhD was mainly, mainly um, using City Engine. So I've done a lot of work in City Engine and uh, I loved it. So anyway, um, moving on. So a little bit about my department. So this is CASA. It's actually, this is not CASA, <laughs> uh, but this was actually not done by me. This was done by the head of the department, um, Professor Andrew Hudson Smith, who is also my supervisor. And this was done about six years ago uh, when uh, they first introduced, the team introduced the first master's course, which I participated, and they used uh, City Engine, they introduced City Engine to us. As, um, as a tool to create rapid uh, 3D cities for uh, the use in virtual environments and uh, augmented reality environments and so on. Uh, so CASA specializes a lot, it, it has a long tradition in 3D cities uh, and uh, Z, uh, Z axis data, uh, but it also, I mean, it's, it's um, I have to read this because I can't remember it. Um, shame on me. So, uh, CASA specializes in the application and visualization of spatial analytic technologies and simulation models to cities and regions. So, the, the, the department now um, focus, has a lot of different projects, um, uh, has a long tradition in urban modeling, uh, resilience in cities, uh, urban analytics. They do a lot of work now currently mm -hmm. in IoT sensors and a little bit of AI. Uh, big data analytics, um, long traditions in GIS systems uh, in, um, uh, and in web mapping and uh, BIR and a lot of work in simulating flows and uh, pedestrian movements and crowds. Um, so currently we have 24 postdocs, around three professors, reader, one reader, eight lecturers, 12 PhDs. 37 master students and three master courses, the MSc in Smart Cities and Urban Analytics, the MRes in Special Data Science and Visualization, and the MSc in Special Data Science and Visualization. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, the Casa land is a very nice city, but obviously it doesn't exist in real life. And um, as the, fa the famous architect uh, Le Corbusier said, uh, form follows function. So, so essentially, um, spatial analysis is interested in analyzing and explaining real cities and what are the underlying functions that go behind these cities. And what because cities are essentially um, socioeconomic systems. They, they heavily depend on these kind of uh, interdependencies in order to uh, to evolve and, and form in essence and, um, and 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 what we do is we try to find these underlying patterns using different methods to to understand how the city works in essence so this is a bit as, uh, overused as an example but uh, you probably know um, John Snow's uh, quite famous map on uh, how he, in uh, 1854, he mapped uh, the uh, cholera outbreak in London. So um, this is a very famous uh, spatial analysis, which is why I'm showing it. But it's essentially uh, what he did is that he noticed that there is a correlation between the cholera outbreaks and, and so places where there's actually uh, water sources, so like wells or pumps 
So what he did is he mapped all the wells and the pumps in the city, and he mapped all the cholera incidents, and he realized that there is a correlation. So that was one of the first examples of spatial analysis. But essentially, by uh, collecting data sets around the cities and identifying these patterns, we're also able to predict stuff. So um, this is one example. This is the Clark Urban Growth Model. So you can actually start predicting with using different complicated complexity theories. How do, do cities grow over time and, uh, and start seeing, seeing how things may evolve in the future? So I thought it would be, so yeah, okay. So how, how does that relate to city engine? Um, so essentially what we can do in city engine is we can, we can take these urban models and we can rewrite them in the 3D environment and actually see the city growing or, or you know, becoming smaller in real time and start to kind of like introducing this kind of theories in 3D, 3D environments. So I thought I might start with a very, very early uh, example. This is something I did, uh, the first project I did in my master's. But I thought it would be fun to kind of explain how it works. So I, I'm not sure if you're aware of, with the, of the von Thunen model. Does anybody know about it? Yeah? Ah, okay, cool. One person. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So um, this, again, is one of the earliest models in the history of uh, mathematical modeling and spatial analysis. And it's kind of interesting because this guy here, Von Thunen, in 1826, he tried to describe how cities work uh, using a mathematical equation. And what he did is that he, he did a very simple agricultural model. So what he said is that, let's assume that we have like a monocentric cities, like we have a city with one center, and then around it, we have different uh, land uses, which at the time, because it's agricultural, it, it, it had to do with crops. And then he said, all right, so uh, basically, uh, people who cultivate products, they want to be as closer to the center as possible because they don't want to travel far away because that increases the transportation costs. So it's cheaper for them to be closer to the market, right? And also products that are um, of, let's say, they, 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 they're very easy to, to, they need to get faster to the market, need to be closer. So for example, dairy project needs to be close to the market because they need to be transferred very fast. So what he essentially did is he linked uh, this, uh, this proximity with uh, uh, rent. And he said that, uh, that the rent price of, of, the, of the zones that are uh, closer to the center increase um, based on uh, price market of the crops and the transportation cost. So, um, so essentially, so what we can do in City Engine is we can actually write these rules uh, in CGA rules, and we can have like a real-time version of the von Thunen model in City Engine. So very quickly, we can do like a, a radio uh, random layout, and we can write the rules, and we can generate sliders that um, basically describe the price market of each zone and the transportation cost. And then we can see how by changing these values, changing the price markets of products, it's uh, land use outbeats the other based on how much profit the, the producer is making. Um, so yeah, again, so if, if we increase the transportation cost of zone two, how does that affect uh, zone one or zone three? Or we, if we increase the price market of, of zone one, how does that become a bit more profitable in that outbeat zone two? Um, so very simple. But then we can go on and do some more complicated functions. So this is like a, a generalized version, an extended version, where, where we can include like multiple centers, and we can instead of, of writing everything in CGA, we can create, uh, we can include dynamics, and therefore uh, use Python console to do some more complicated calculations, and then start seeing how do these models, these theoretical models, work in essence, because City Engine provides a really nice platform for this because. 
it's actually easy to write them. Otherwise, you actually need to write everything in a completely new software on your own. So um, that was quite an, um, an advantage in a way. So I'm just going to carry on. Right, yeah, so this one, this one has, um, has four zones, and it's using the Python console to generate the original model, and then we can still use the same sliders to actually see how does that behave. Right, so the interesting thing about this is that we can actually export all these things and put them in different platforms and start developing applications that can communicate to a wider audience. We can make um, intuitive controls that you can actually play with them. We can develop applications that you can download them in, in, uh, in cell phones or iPads and also develop analytics that are working in real time or, or create a little games that, uh, that challenge you to tasks, things like that. Um, and again, you know, I mean, the, the great thing about it is that we can actually uh, develop some analytics. So this is a different model. This is a model that kind of analyzes retail centers. So if we have like a lot of retail centers and we have residences, how does the, the income from residents go to the retail centers? How, ma how, much, how, many, how much money do people spend in retail centers? Um, and we start have some actual analytics um, or on the other hand, we can also make scenarios. So we can say, okay, if we have a lot of retail centers, what is the optimal location for another for a new retail center? What is the optimal uh, location for a school, for example? Things like that. And if we add some urban design, we can actually see where does that link to urban planning tasks. So if we start doing some more visualizations, we can see that uh, there might be an interesting way of integrating these things into planning task methodologies. And again, moving to some more participatory techniques, we can export these uh, models, we can use augmented reality techniques, we can put them on phones, and we can build uh, applications that we can ask people, well, okay, what, whoops, sorry. <laughs> We can ask people, um, um, what kind of shops would you like to see in your neighborhood? And then see what kind of flows generate over time. Right, so um, right, I'm not going to go too much detail. I'm not sure how much time I have. Um, but this was part of my PhD thesis, and I would just like to show it because uh, it's a very, very complex model. Um, and uh, it, it, is, it is a planning model. It's a planning that it's a, it's a model that calculates um, residences and uh, uh, and uh, housings and uh, retail and uh, schools from basic employment. So basically, somebody puts um, let's say employment figures in in in, uh, in, uh, in industrial zones, and that generates. Uh, residential zones and that can be translated in numbers so the actual simulation that they had built at the time is this which is not very visually nice nobody understand what that is um, yeah um, so instead of that let's see hmm. yeah so that's what well, it's gone So that was the, the, the actual simulation. It has a couple of, of cubes that move. So each, each of these squares is a, a different variable. And then what we're doing is that um, we, can, we can use City Engine. We can rewrite this in City Engine to actually start seeing um, different variables and produce different visualizations to see how does that actually move in the actual space of this area, which is the South Yorkshire area. And further to that, we can link it to planning zones and therefore can add all the building footprints or planning zones. Uh, so this is Sheffield, Doncaster and Barnsley. And if we go to Doncaster, 
we can do a two-tier structure and uh, get all this modeling goodness and actually start populating uh, buildings with population and see how does that relate to actual uh, residential capacities. Um, right, so. Moving on. Uh, spatial analysis also has to do a lot with real data. So these are actual uh, building age data from uh, the area of Campton in London. Uh, this was done by a uh, researcher, Polly Hatton. Uh, she's also in Casa and she's been working on a project called, called Coloring London, which is basically about uh, mapping all the building age uh, groups of London. So if you're interested in building age data in London for some reason, you can visit our, our website and you can download all the information. It's free. Um, so what we did with that is we kind of like, we kind of thought about, sorry about this, it's very academic, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, so we thought about, okay, what if we actually take all the Victorian houses that are in London, all the age that has to do with Victorian houses, we make some typologies we kind of rule out all the weird typologies that come out of this. Uh, we come up with some, some type of buildings that relate to plots. We create this kind of like rows of houses and then we develop statistics on where these, ha these houses are and how many they are and what are the fire ratios and um, maximum plot width length and so on. And then what we can do is we can use the statistics to actually generate uh, the number of subdivisions and plots. So these are the actual data sets and these are the, the, the actual plots generated with statistics. And we, we've put the, the, the Victorian rule sets and let's see if we, we can have accurate uh, floor, floor print areas and so on. And we came up with a nice, quite nice example. So this is the actual um, uh, the, the map version, and these are the, the plots that are identified by the system as having, as having Victorian houses, which is quite near. And then what we can do is we can do some nice scenarios of what would, what would the city look like if we would actually start demolishing stuff, we're starting building new stuff um, using a single slider. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. I have one. Um, I was just wondering, you know, how, do you have a sense, was your idea used in real life, in a real project, or is this just modeling and research? Yeah, so currently is research, mm -hmm. but um, the, the South York Yorkshire case study is actually based on real data. So um, we have the, 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 the model that I, I showed and the, the, the extensive one with the squares mm -hmm. is actually a model that's based on micro simulation data, which is like a type of simulation that um, is calibrated. Well, it's hard to say, but in, in essence, is, is like a very advanced simulation, which, which kind of produces the results, predictions based on real, real data. So it's 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 a real case study in a way. Have you talked to like the urban planners of the city? Yes, we have. We have we have talked to them. Um, we haven't shown them this yet. So it was back in the early stages when it was the first. But, but now there's a, there's a lot of interest in urban modeling in this kind of uh, techniques. So there's another uh, simulation currently running. It's called Quant. Um, and um, it's, it's modeling um, uh, traveling behavior for the entire UK. And there's a lot of interest from uh, public authorities currently. So it's getting there. 